Okay, now that we've completed those rows, what I've done is, like I said, <clears throat> the first four rows, front, back, front, back, and proceeded into this row here, row five, which is working on the right side. And you have, you will work 20 across this way. And now we're ready to tie in the red. Let's uh, refocus that just a little. Bring that down just a little closer. Okay, now hopefully you can see better. So now we're beginning to work next with attaching the red right here. So you'll come across 20 in the white. And now you'll attach the red and it'll be for four blocks of singles it will be eight doubles. So you'll be working eight doubles in this next section. Okay, and this is how I tie on. Uh, a lot of people do it different ways. But anyway, this is how I do it. Now when I come to like number 20, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, and 20, on your double crochet or any stitch when you're adding on a new color. Always leave the last two hooks or loops on the hook. Bring your work forward. Always bring your work forward because when you flip your work, all of it will be on the back side ready to go for your next row. Now this is how I'll add on my new color. Make a slip stitch. Always leave just a little bit of a tail to work in on the back. Okay. And bring it down to about what you call hook size. I call it hook size. Hook size. Now, you're going to be putting the tail to the back of your work, or wrong side. Now, this being the right side of your work, you hook it in like this which keeps the tail to the back side. Always keeping this forward. Now what you do next, or what I do next, is I flip my work. This leaves for less tie-ins, less tails when you're done. Now this being your chain row, which is your top of your work across, you have a front or right side chain loop and you have a backside chain loop. So always work your tails to the back side. So what I do is take a smaller size hook and work that tail through the back. I basically weave it into my work. And there's two. And never go past however many your next um, your color is calling for in your next section. And if it calls for 8, 10, 12, whatever, you can work through a few. Like, I'm, I'm going to work this all 8 stitches. But if it is little as, like, say, 1 or 2 stitches, always make sure you do leave that tail for sewing. And weave it through, like, say, the 1 or 2 stitches. But never weave it across from there because if you're weaving this red across after your red is done, then you'll be working white over it in this next section here. And when you do, you'll see the red come through. So always stop at the end of the stitches like this one's eight red. It'll be one, two, three. I hope I made that clear. Come on, people. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this way, now when you do your next eight stitches, this is woven in and you've crocheted over it all the way across. Now like I said, for example, if you just do one or two stitches, always be sure you just weave through those one or two on the back and leave a tail long enough to stitch back across and back across underneath on the back to lock that stitch in and it will withstand many, many washings, and it will not work out. Now, to turn back to the front side, 
what we'll be working here now is like I said eight doubles for this section here of your um, ladybug so we we'll proceed with one this strand here will be worked over when you do this when you come through that will kind of like cover that over with thread okay there's one stitch done ready to go two three four five six seven and eight see that's the end of your yarn back here so just go over it and go through the first two and always leave the last two on the hook for adding your new color so bring this forward to the front of your work like you did your white and you should have 20 white and 8 red now you will want to add on for your next color here which will be white and you'll work two, four, double crochet. I see the pull end. Do the same thing as you did with your red. Make a tail for tying in on the back. And you see what you'll be doing here is two to cover over. So I always leave that extra amount for sewing in on the back on this one. So make your double. Bring it down to about chain size. Now, I'll be working this to the back, so you attach here. Come through. Okay. And flip your work. Take your smaller size hook. work in these two stitches now I didn't think about it but your red will be working over white so you could go ahead and work this white in across a few more stitches so I'm gonna say work six or seven three four the white will not show through that way because you're basically working on white. Couple more. One more for good measure. <laughs> and there you go. Now, proceed with your next section, which is going to be, uh, like I said, for white. So do a double and make sure that covers that goes over that white, which it will. Bring through. There's your first one. And do four, two, three, and four. And leave the last two on the hook to add your new color. Bring that forward. So this is how your work should look to this point. Now, add this on just like you did the other red. Make your slip knot. You'll be working eight in the back because you're this this is asymmetrical, which basically means right side is identical to left side. And count you're just working in reverse so when you do eight here you know you're gonna do eight here when you do eight nine ten eleven twelve here you know you're gonna do twelve there so basically it's a symmetrical back and forth so let's add this one make your slip knot make it about chain size Put that yarn to the back 
and be ready here and pull through. Flip your work. Leave this in, in the back row, the back loops of your chain row. One, two, three. I'll snip that white. Four, five. Six, seven, and like I said, you don't have to do that many, but I find that a few extra is always better than a few less. So now you're ready for the second section, which is identical, like I said, to the first half. So it'll be eight more red. Pulling this to the front, work eight more doubles in the red. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, and eight. Always working the first two chains or first two loops, only leaving the last two. Bring the work to the front of the working yarn, and this is how your work should look thus far. And proceed out with uh, 20 more of your white and you will have this row completed and when you complete it like I said how I mark to keep up with what rows I'm in especially when it's a more intricate or detailed or bigger pattern for graph I always will mark the row when I have completed it so I'll know which row I'm on next so go ahead and finish working this out and I'll be back with you when you get to the add-on of the black. Now here's when you'll have the next row up will be the back row, wrong side. You'll have one bobbin of white, one bobbin of red, one bobbin of black, one bobbin of red, one bobbin of white. And when you get up here you'll have one white, one red, one black, one red, one black, one red, one black, one red, one white. You'll add each bobbin as you go through here and have that many more bobbins as you go and then it'll work itself down from here out. But anyway, I'll meet you back here when we get to the black.